So, good afternoon from my side as well. Uh, I would like to speak about the center forward and center backward position. But before I start, I would like to join Diane's speech. I don't want to repeat too much, but uh, I would like to emphasize this is the result of our common work. Len, World Aquatics, delegates, referees. Uh, referees organization. Referees organization. So thank you very much for uh, you all because I hope by now everybody can understand we have to work together and we are working together. I don't think we are the smartest as technical committee or delegates, especially I don't think I'm the smartest. We have the opportunity to give you the chance to organize this kind of works and uh, uh, hopefully the way we are on and the result we have uh, completed so far uh, can satisfy our stakeholders. If you see water polo, there is a saying that to build up a team you have to have a good goalkeeper and a good center forward. So it means, for me, this is one of the most critical position. Then already started to speak about impeding. A lot of uh, the idea he said, it's valid for the center position <coughs> as well. But uh, when a team is playing, started to build an attack, the attack is based on the position of the center forward. We would like to support the action. That's why the referee should allow players to compete for the ball or position when they are respecting the following guidelines not to play provocati provocatively against your opponent. They will play every time because they think they are smarter. Water polo is a contact sport. There is a lot of contact pro and contra by the center forward, by the center backward. And they are fighting not only for the ac uh, action, they are fighting for your support for the call. They are and the next step after, provo uh, after the provocation, because if somebody starts to provocate, the next movement is the simulation. If the center forward provocate, the center backward, the next step will be the simulation of the opponent. The third, as Dan already mentioned, the players have to play for the ball, not uh, on the opponent. The center forward has to take position, and it's very difficult. Uh, I was a center forward, and I know the center backward has a much better position. He has to push forward, the center forward has to push backward, which is quite an unbalanced situation, because to push forward, it's much easier. And even if there is no ball, many times happens that the center backward just fighting, holding, impeding all the time without knowing where the ball is. And even without the ball can play for the ball if the defender is aware where the ball is, try to take the position, showing you that he has no intention to impede. Not to, pu not to hold or push constantly. The defender has to show his, her intention to play according to these criteria. And when you put this together, you should arrive that the, ref the referee should avoid calling any foul until the player respects the above mentioned criteria and the committed foul has no influence on the game. Water polo is a contact sport. Water polo is a contact sport. There is a lot of contact, pro and contra, but we have to have 
a straight guideline, as Diane mentioned, from the very beginning to the very end, because it's not good when and they are analyzing you, the teams, players analyzing you. And uh, I don't want to say names and countries, but they will, uh, they will know that the <coughs> Australia referee gives contrafort if you do this. One kind of call cannot be linked for a referee. It has to be linked for the rules and the instructions. On the other hand, the referee must control the center forward situation all the time to avoid the game becoming too physical. Half, half of the game, more or less, is on the center, focus on the center position. More than half of the major fouls occurs in this position. I hope I don't have to em emphasize the importance of this position because most of the time this position uh, decide the final result of the game. And that's why the center forward is very important position and the referee cannot lose any moment controlling it. There are calls you can make during a game, especially in center position. It's important because lately it was a I don't say it's a good practice but, or bad practice, but everybody thought in center position there are only two kind of uh, <coughs> calls. Okay, contra fall is one, but there is a major fall or no call. But as you can see, we have ordinary fall as well. Exclusion falls. <coughs> Without the ball, I should have written first because the action start uh, with a contact without the ball. And after with the ball, penalty foul. With the new rules, we arrive to the delay delayed penalty. Unfortunately, it's still very difficult to apply, but I think we are on a good way because we can see, we could see some very good examples. We will have some as well. Offensive fouls and ordinary fouls. Offensive foul. If we read the rules, letter by letter, word by word, we could call 10 contra fouls in every situation. Because the uh, 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 center forward is looking for the position, grabbing the arm, putting the arm up on the shoulder, probably pushing a bit, probably kicking a bit. But we have to make a straight guideline, as Diane mentioned, and we have to balance which action is related uh, to the game, has affected some advantage for the center forward, which is, according, which is not according to the rules. We would like to see good action in center forward. And that's why it's not good when somebody is watching the game, and I'm speaking about us as experts, <coughs> that there is a call and we are looking at each other what was called because nobody understands. Imagine the fans on the stand in this situation, what they can understand. And this should be the way to establish a straight guideline and uh, follow this guideline because it will help to understand water polo for the public as well. Opa. The first is exclusion without, without the ball. Diane already showed examples. The center position, it doesn't start with the moment when the center is already arrived to the position. The transition, it already belongs to the position especially when the, the center forward trying to reach this position. Dan already showed some examples about impeding. Sometimes it happens that last 10 meters, the defender doesn't make any swimming stroke because he's pushing all the time back the center forward. The result that they arrive to the position that the center forward pushed the defender. And if you 
don't call the impeding at the beginning, it will cause that you should give a contrafold because the center forward otherwise cannot do anything on this. And exclusion without the ball, this is the most sensitive part of your job. When to interfere when there is no ball. We would like to have cause which is related to the game. And with a grab, uh, grabbing the suit with a contrafort, it's much easier than to measure the play uh, in the center forward position when to interfere with an exclusion when there is no ball. And that's why this is the most sensitive part of the refereeing disposition. As I mentioned, it's a contract sport, but we should find the right and consistent balance to call this. Consistency, they are already mentioned. Consistency on one hand is referring just only the certain games. There is a referee, I have my knowledge, I have my practice, and I'm calling everything on the same way from the very beginning till the very end. But luckily, we have two referees on the game. And most of the times, the two referee, referees are completely different characters, but you have to collaborate. And you have to establish the, about the, men the previously mentioned standard together. Doesn't matter if you like or if you don't like what your colleague does. You work together, you, be, you, you will be measured, you will be evaluated together. And uh, fortunately, we have the communication sets, most of the main events of ours. It's uh, one step easier, but it's very important. So consistent, consistent calls during the whole game. This means consistency with yourself. Probably this is the easiest. Consistent calls with your colleague. It's a bit probably more difficult than we imagine. And consistent calls on the long term. It means it doesn't matter who is the referee on a certain game. When the teams are preparing for the games, they know that this, is, this situation will be an exclusion, this situation will be a, a contrafort. Not they start to speak. If Molnar is the referee, this situation is a contrafort, but if uh, Perisic is a referee, it's an exclusion. It's a bit dream. It would be a big success. But this has to be in your mind that this should be the way refereeing this. I brought some examples about exclusion uh, without the ball. Probably it will be later, the instruction for this. Most of the times it's a big fight. It's very difficult to decide who is holding, who is impeding, who is pushing, who is sinking. The center forward, uh, first of all, the center forward if has the position, and the, we, would, we could say the center forward position is in front of the goal till four meters. So this area is the center forward position. Let's see. Pulling, grabbing. In this situation, this colleague interfered very well because this is a very good example of collaboration because the other attacking referee had no chance to see the moment and I think the interfering with the exclusion Opa. was a very good one. And don't forget, we will have later exclusion with a ball. In the extended goal area has to be called according to the procedure which hasn't changed. You show the number, you exclude the player, 
and you give a signal for restarting. It's very, very important to protect yourself. Because if you don't follow, it will be a big chaos and we will charge by the teams, by the coaches, by the players that we did on purpose and we have affected the final result of the game. Two hands down, grabbing the head. And they had mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more time. They had mentioned. We had the instruction already last year if the fall is going on the head or neck, it's a misconduct. Don't hesitate to call this on this kind of fall, the misconduct because uh, many times the coaches instruct the defender take the head of the player if it's the if it's your last result don't hesitate and they are doing as you can see and uh, if you call exclusion with substitution on this situation you will be cheered It okay, one more time. It was not that physical before, but they are playing zone, and uh, the attacker was moving toward the ball forward, and that moment he was grabbed, and he has no chance to get the ball. Hop, moving away from the goal toward the ball, and that moment he was grabbed obvious should be exclusion. As you can see, especially with the new rules, the defending team situation is much, much more difficult than it was before because the playoff field, especially in front of goal, much wider and if there is a cross pass that moment most of the times the defender is losing the position that's why the defender is trying to get to the other side and without impeding without a, a contact it's almost impossible and that moment i don't say it's always but most of the times something should be caught and this is the right example when the ball is coming to this side, it's in, almost inside two meters, the defender has no chance to do anything just to make an exclusion to avoid goal or action or a penalty. It was a very good one. The exclusion with the ball, it's a good call, but that moment the ball is outside of six meters and immediate shot cannot happen. That's why after the exclusion, it's a counter call. It's a good one. As I mentioned, there are a lot of contra between the attacker and the defender. We have to give them the chance to compete for the ball with a straight guideline. And we have to be obvious what is the required limit they can go for. It's very difficult to define which is the moment it should be an exclusion. That's why I would say that the, uh, the instruction that the referee has to show his clear intention of defending time by time. And it means there are a contact but it cannot be constant and continuously during the whole attack without showing the intention that I'm not doing <coughs> anything. That's why I would say this is the easiest way to describe that if you cannot see the defender's hands for three, four seconds, it means he has no intention to show you that he is 
not doing anything against the rules. And if we don't use consistently, the game will get too physical, and to lose the control, it's a very high risk. And uh, in the disposition, it's also the contrafort. The contrafort is always a key question. Because as I mentioned, when there is a contrafort and nobody understands what's going, it's a problem. So when there is a contact and there is no consequences, you can wait a bit. If the center get the ball or not get, uh, get the ball, get, uh, gain some advantage or not, and just in this case, to call the contrafort. It's not possible to call everything, and it's not required to call everything. We have to call, which is necessary to be called. I already mentioned the procedure of exclusion without a ball in the extended goal area, which is uh, from the two meters to the six meters area. One more time, signaling the number, signaling the exclusion, and giving permission for restart. Without the signal, the player who created the exclusion cannot get a ball and score a ball. Many times happens that probably you give the signal when the player uh, start to pass for the other direction of the players, it's fine. You don't have to stop in this time. You just have to stop if that certain player who created the uh, exclusion gets the ball and make a goal. Gets the ball and make a goal. And this, pro this procedure, show the number, exclude the player and give the signal, normally it shouldn't last more than two, three seconds. Sometimes it can be more, but if you do it, if it's obvious, it's two seconds, and we continue and don't punish the attacking team with our speed of calling the situation. The next step, the center forward is fighting for getting the ball, making an action, and most of the times they know if the ball arrives, most probably it will be an exclusion. And most of the times the center forward is not fighting to make an action, it's they are fighting to make, getting the ball, holding the position, and get an exclusion. And the main objective <coughs> this is the main objective of the teams, to play the ball for the center forward. If the center forward has the position, most of the times they start to play zone to avoid this kind of situation. And uh, when to call exclusion in this situation? The center forward, opa. the center forward having the position <coughs> in front of the goal without impeding the defender. Has the position, no holding, no holding the uh, swimsuit, no holding the arm, not moving backward, moving forward the ball when the ball arrives. There are defenders are, uh, around, and the center forward reaching the ball before the defenders arrives. And the center backward making contact on the, on the center forward, who is not holding the ball in the hand. Because with ball in the hand, exclusion shouldn't be called. Just in case if we have a contact on the neck or on the head. Yes, exclusion uh, with a ball in the hand shouldn't be called. We have only one situation that a major fault can be called. It's a penalty situation with a ball in the hand. Exclusion, ordinary fault, cannot be called with ball in the hand. Examples for <coughs> ball arrived, the center forward released the ball, 
get possession, release the ball, contact with the arm, obvious exclusion, not facing to the goal, penalty is not an option, good call. It's also, it, uh, it started. Probably it was a bit of provocation, but after, probably it was a bit of simulation. From my side, it's not a problem not to call this, because if you start to call this kind of situation, we kill all spot. There is zone. The ball arrives in this situation. The defender has no chance, chance to make an exclusion because they don't want to make a center forward to make a goal from action. And 99%, okay, let's say 90, this kind of action when the center forward has the position, the ball arrives, no defender arriving, the center forward is not making a contrafort, exclusion should come. It's already could be an exclusion without the ball, but uh, the referee realized that after the foul, the player can pass immediately. Probably we can say it was a good advantage situation not to call a ball without an exclusion, not to call a, uh, an exclusion without the ball. The center get the position, and uh, it's much more appreciated than we have action when there is a ball with the center forward. Because to give exclusion without the ball, it's a reason to speak about it. When the ball arrives, there is no question, exclusion most of the time should be called. Penalty. And delayed penalty with the new rules. I think everybody thinks that it's an easy thing, but we have referees, not the referees who are here, not the referees who are watching the streaming. We have hundreds, thousands of referees worldwide. And I, could, I can say this is still the most open questions, one of, one of the most open questions, and we still cannot give a proper answer on, on this, as we can see the refereeing as a whole thing, uh, as a one thing. That's why we have to bring examples, we have to show, because this kind of course cannot be learned from the book. That's why you have to watch as many games as possible, you have to follow the comments on the calls, because this is the guideline, we will be more united by the end of the day. In penalty situation, the center turns, or the, uh, okay, let's say we are speaking about center position. The center turns, facing to the goal. There is facing to the goal. He has intention to progress with the action. action. Many times it happens, the center arrives, I run, no, no, give me the penalty. When you can see they don't have the intention, it's not a penalty situation. Because we said, as I am mentioned, without the fall, most probable goal. But if the center forward has no intention, there is no goal at all. Not probable goal, no goal at all. Contacted from behind by a defender, not from the side, even if the ball is in the hand. As I mentioned, this is the only situation in water polo when you can call when the ball is in the hand. The Goal is in front of me, I am the only one with the goalkeeper and somebody is making a throw from behind. It's always a big question, what is behind? There are positions, because I'm facing the goal. But there are positions when the best position is not face-to-face -face with the goal. For example, on the long post, most of the players standing like this. And we have to consider on that position, this is facing with the goal. 
the goal is here and the ball is coming and I'm doing this. I'm not doing like this. So I'm facing to the player I'm getting the, uh, I'm getting the ball from, but I'm standing like this. If the player, defender coming this side is coming from behind, we have to consider the direction of the action. Okay. Is it good? We have to consider the direction of the action. If the ball is in the air flying, not in the hand as it was in the previous, the contact is from the side. It's also should be penalty. Imagine the situation, man up situation. There is a player on the long post and the position one or two passing for the long post and the middle defender who is coming from the side, grabbing the hand before the ball arrives. It's a penalty. It's not important in this situation where the ball is coming from. If there is no anybody in front of the player, in this situation, penalty should be called. But that moment when the player having the ball <coughs> and not shooting immediately, in that moment the player arrives from the side, it's not a penalty anymore, it's nothing. It's very difficult to decide. And I have the theory when we're reviewing a situation, because you have one ten seconds to decide. You don't have time to analyze. It has six criteria for the penalties. You don't analyze within the one ten seconds that it's penalty or not according to the criteria. You have to have the knowledge, the experience, and all the other things to call within that one ten seconds correctly. It's very, very difficult. And that's why my idea when we're reviewing a situation, because a lot of time, a lot of times we got complain that it's not penalty, it's not exclusion. But if after one reviewing, we cannot say that it's good or not, the referee was right. Because it's very easy to analyze for 10 minutes to watch back 10 times. And after the very smart analyzing, we say you made a mistake. If we cannot say, cannot decide what was after one reviewing, we don't speak about mistakes. The referee was right. And I also, I don't know if you could see some of the referees, uh, you uh, recognize yourself. It's not about criticizing anybody. It's about showing examples. If somebody, because I, I just could see you, Levan, and uh, you will see yourself. I would like to apologize for this. Facing to, facing to the goalkeeper, and there is no other defender in between the center forward and the center and the goalkeeper. Till two, three years ago, when we had we already had uh, the new penalty rules, we had a situation when the goalkeeper was coming from the front, and uh, <coughs> it's penalty or not. If the goalkeeper is coming from the front and the ball is in the hand, even if the goalkeeper is hitting the arm, it's not a penalty because coming from the front. And if there is a center forward, and uh, like a ball in the air, if the goalkeeper is close and the goalkeeper is moving to the center forward from the front, but the center is still not having the ball, the ball is in the air, it's a penalty. But with ball in the hand from the front, the goalkeeper cannot make a penalty. If the center forward is releasing the ball and the goalkeeper is still making the contact, it's a penalty. Yes. The action should be supported, especially when we have the option for the delayed penalty. You have to have the feeling that the center forward has the chance, the intention to finish the action. In this case, you have to give advantage because you, ca you still will be able to call the penalty if the center forward missing the action. This is called delayed penalty. It's not a question. It's also 
because of, there was an action in progress. And it also could, ha could have been exclusion without the ball, but there is an advantage here. The referee didn't call the exclusion without the ball. It's much more appreciated to have an action at the end like this. As you can see, there are a lot of contacts, also grab in the neck, also could have been an exclusion by now, but it's much better, wait, wait a bit, let's see what is the progress of the action, and when you reach a penalty, or we can have a chance to see a goal from action, it's much better, much better for our sport. And these actions are not a question that it's clear penalties. Just to show what we are speaking about. And we have the penalty for... In this situation the ball was in the air and even it was not from the side, from behind. It's also the next grabbing the hand when the ball is in the air. It's a bit far from the goal, but it's rather a penalty than an exclusion because imagine in this situation when she gets the ball and without the fall, it's a very probable goal scoring situation. And now we arrive to the deli uh, delicate part when we are speaking about exclusion, penalty, or nothing. And this following slides, not to criticize you, to show what we should avoid, how, where we should progress. Penalty or exclusion. For me, first sight, it's a penalty. And it was only an exclusion. And I will, I will show another example. For me, it's a clear penalty. Just to show. It happened, it's not a mistake. For the future, this kind of situation, for me, it's a penalty. My opinion is not water polo rules. It can be some advice, it's part of the instruction. But if we follow what we are trying to message you, it will be much easier. One of the most critical parts, then we have the center forward. And the center forward is turning to the right. A right-hander turning to the right. Many times it happens, the ball arrives, the center turns, but it's just two-thirds of turning. And if I turn like this, I'm not facing to the goal. In this situation, started to turn like this after put the ball down, but the contact is not coming from the back, it's coming from the side. The center released the ball, for me it was a penalty, but for me it's rather an exclusion. I don't say it's a big problem, it was a penalty. But the center didn't, first of all, was going for the penalty. It, it's a clear exclusion for me, and it's uh, on the very limit. But for me, from my op for, uh, according from, uh, to my opinion, it's rather an exclusion than a penalty. It's also, I have no problem that it was an exclusion, the center forward turn was not from behind, he was not facing to the goal, he didn't make a full turn, 
for me to call an exclusion on this, it's a good call. I'm happy we started to speak, but we can speak afterwards a bit. Penalty. Penalty for Kazakhstan. This is a good one. The center gets the ball, turns, ball in the hand. He loses the ball because ball is in the hand and the defender hit the arm. For me, it's nothing. Not even an exclusion. And it was called a penalty. At the post, so nothing. This is what I'm saying. It's nothing because ball is in the hand, and we can call penalty with the ball is in the hand. But he lost the ball because the defender hit the arm, and he was not facing to the goal. The fault was not coming from behind. That's why penalty, not even a consideration. And uh, if you remember, if you remember the first situation when I said penalty should have been called and it was just uh, an exclusion, in this situation, six meter is here. It's probably not even inside. I don't say it's a counterfall, <laughs> but uh, for not penalty, because for me it was not even inside. And the idea, because as I mentioned, you have one ten seconds to decide. If you have doubt, it's better to call a penalty. Then you start to analyze, at the end you don't call a penalty, and at the end it turns out it was a penalty. <laughs> so it's better to call a penalty, which should not be one, than to call one which should be called. But this is this is the important part. And the, you, will, you will see... No, it's, it's a different kind of butt. It's, it's a red butt. We have some situation when penalty was called and it will be after one reviewing obvious for everybody. They were not penalties. It's nothing. I don't understand even the theory. Why is it penalty? Most probably, but not penalty for sure. It's another one, similar. The defender touched the ball before it arrived. The center forward had no chance. And when it was a contact, it was not a probable goal situation. I would say it's probably nothing or maximum an ordinary fault by the end. It's also, the, the fall is not coming from behind. Ball in the hand, and the fall is from the side. Fall. It's nothing. It's not even exclusion. It's nothing. And, and this is the first. situation I mentioned that turns but not facing to the goal. We can analyze. But three players around, and for me, it's not a probable goal scoring situation. First scene, first and uh, I in this situation, when the center forward turning to the right, the position of the center forward has to be on the left side of the goal. And we will see an exa example here, when position on the post, 
and turning to the right, and after turn, this is a penalty. When the center forward goes to the side and turn toward the goal, even with not a 180% uh, degree turn, can be facing with the goal. Just to show you again, at the post, okay, there is a bit of grabbing, pro and contra, turns, obvious penalty. Delayed penalty. In the rules we have, the referee may raise the hand when there is the <coughs> contact. And the referee already could have called a penalty, but because the referee gives advantage, delay the call, and the referee can, may raise the hand. We say may because it's not a necessary condition to call, uh, to give, according to the rules, not a necessary condition to call a delayed penalty. It cannot be that the coach start to complain, you didn't raise the hand. Sometimes you don't even have time to think about, not to raise, to think about raising the hand. And it's very important, the contact and missing the shot must come from the same action. It cannot happen that I turn, there is a contact on four meters facing to the goal, nobody uh, among us with the, with the goalkeeper, but I decide, put, put down the ball and swimming two strokes, play the goalkeeper and score a goal. And in this case, if the goalkeeper saves, it's two different action. It's not a delayed penalty. Three examples for delayed penalty, turns, already could have go. And no goal, penalty. and it's penalty. good. For me, it's a very good example of delayed penalty. Because and the penalty, penalty could have been called penalty. after the first goal. Penalty could have been called, half a second later uh, he missed, and the penalty was called. It's also a very good example of this. Do you want to see again? In this situation there is the contact, two threats, missing the action, delayed penalty, it's a good call. Contact, it was not even half a second. But the referee waited, didn't call immediately. And the delayed penalty was a very good call on this as well. We already spoke about the ordinary foul. Let's say classical center position. Two meters from the two meter line and in between the poles, let's say this is the classical center position. And if the center is losing the position, it means the, he is pushed out to a four meter, pushed out uh, or moving out for the ball and arrives uh, next to the light green area. And we could say the exclusion is too much, but no call is not enough. You have the feeling to maintain the possession would be a good call. In this situation, you call ordinary for on the center position. Because otherwise, if you call <coughs> an ordinary on this when the ball arrives, it opens conversations. We don't need them. So this was uh, about the center position. Thank you very much. I hope it was useful. And uh, good luck for the season. Thank you very much.